Amen. It is good to be worshiping together this morning, Covenant Life. Thanks for joining with us. We are turning our scriptures to 1 Peter chapter 4. We've been going through this series that we are calling Our Living Hope as we've been walking through the letter 1 Peter. Um, Our scripture is read this morning by Judy and Bruce Bersma. You're invited to stand for the reading of God's word in body or in spirit and hear now these words from the book that we love. A reading from 1 Peter chapter 4. Therefore, since Christ suffered in his body, arm yourselves also with the same attitude, because he who has suffered in his body is done with sin. As a result, he does not live the rest of his earthly life for evil human desires, but rather for the will of God. For you have spent enough time in the past doing what pagans choose to do, debauchery, lust, drunkenness, orgies, carousing, and detestable idolatry. They think it's strange that you do not plunge with them into the same flood of dissipation, and they heap abuse on you. But they will have to give account to him who is ready to judge the living and the dead. For this is the reason the gospel was preached, even to those who are now dead, so that they might be judged according to men in regard to the body but live according to God in regard to the spirit. The end of all things is near. Therefore, be clear-minded and self-controlled so that you can pray. Above all, love each other deeply because love covers over a multitude of sins. Offer hospitality to one another without grumbling. Each one should use whatever gift he has received to serve others faithfully administering God's grace in its various forms. If anyone speaks, he should do it as one speaking the very words of God. If anyone serves, he should do it with the strength God provides, so that in all things God may be praised through Jesus Christ. To him be the glory and the power forever and ever. Amen. Dear friends, do not be surprised at the painful trial you are suffering as though something strange were happening to you. But rejoice that you participate in the sufferings of Christ so that you may be overjoyed when his glory is revealed. If you are insulted because of the name of Christ, you are blessed, for the spirit of glory and of God rests on you. If you suffer, it should not be as a murderer or thief or any other kind of criminal, or even as a meddler. However, if you suffer as a Christian, Do not be ashamed, but praise God that you bear that name. For it is time for judgment to begin with the family of God. And if it begins with us, what will the outcome be for those who do not obey the gospel of God? And if it is hard for the righteous to be saved, what will become of the ungodly and the sinner? So So then, those who suffer according to God's will should commit themselves to their faithful creator, and continue to do good. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. Indeed, you may be seated. Yeah, it's been a, it's another beautiful day at the end of another beautiful week, and our scripture reading even had birds singing, and we get to talk a little bit about suffering today. So uh, let's, let's seek God's uh, wisdom and God's words in this moment. Would you pray with me? Almighty Lord, would your word be our rule, your Holy Spirit our teacher, and would your greater glory be our chief concern. To the glory of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The end is near, Peter states matter-of-factly there in verse 7. The culmination is is close. The end of history is coming close. It's at hand. Um, Peter may have had in mind that Jesus would return within days or weeks. It's possible to read it that way just on the surface, but that's not the only way to read this. Um, We, when we look to Paul, we hear Paul talk about the work of Christ through his death and resurrection. And in 2 Corinthians, he says, if anyone is in Christ, then the new creation has already come. It's present. It is here. The new creation has already come. 
And I get the sense from Peter that the end, the restoration of heaven and earth in a new creation because of the work of Jesus Christ in his death and resurrection now overlaps the sin-staggered world that we call home. That word near in the Greek, can it, it can even mean joined together. And so now Peter is saying, don't grow weary. The restoration of all things is coming. And he wants uh, his audience to live with an urgency and a clarity. Regardless of how we understand Peter's statement that the end of all things is near, he says, be alert and of a clear mind so that you can pray. That surprised me when I, I saw that that was the reason he wants us to be alert, so that you can pray. But it makes sense. Through the Spirit, soak in the presence and the love of Christ. It's like if you take a dry cloth and you, you surround it with water, then that water gets absorbed and soaked into the cloth, and the cloth becomes wet. It becomes soaked with its surroundings. When we commune with Jesus Christ in his presence and his love, his peace becomes our peace. His compassion becomes our compassion. His strength becomes our strength. His wisdom becomes our wisdom. And his ways transform our ways. We soak in the love of God through prayer. It's something we are called to. It's something we get to do. And as a community of believers, not just individuals, we together become a community soaking in, absorbing the love of Christ, absorbing the peace and presence of Christ. So you don't see it in our English translation, but all of the yous in here are y'alls. They're plural. Peter is saying y'all together when he's talking to these communities that he's writing to. And he urges us all to pray with clarity. And then he gives a window into what the community of faith will look like when we absorb God's self-giving love together. Love is to be the defining mark of the Jesus community. That's the start. Start right there in verse 8. Above all, love each other deeply because love covers a multitude of sins. Uh, love governs all the actions that are to follow. Miraculously, it even covers over sins. Somehow, mysteriously, Christ's work covers our sins, and then we're invited into the same work. Our love covers the sins of our brothers and sisters in Jesus. We get to participate in the same act of compassion and forgiveness and restoration. And he goes on, he just gives examples here. Show hospitality. Make room for the other who has found Jesus, even if they're not like you, especially if they're not like you. And no grumbling, Peter throws in. We get the sense maybe that was an issue. Use the gifts that you have been given by God. Every gift you have been given is for the sake of others. Every gift that you've been given is for the sake of of others. Use it to serve others. You have something to offer the church family, and it actually mediates God's grace to the rest of us. He keeps going, speak with the very words of God. Serve with the strength of God. Paul says it this way in Colossians. He's in Colossians chapter 3. Therefore, as God's chosen people Holy and dearly loved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Bear with each other and forgive one another. Forgive as the Lord forgives you. And over all these virtues, put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. 
I say it again, love is to be the defining mark of the Jesus community. Lay down your life for each other. Lay down your self-centeredness. Lay down your opinions. Lay down your privileges. Lay down your fight to prove that you're right. Lay down your time, your money, your possessions. For the sake of others, follow in the footsteps of the self-giving love of Jesus and lay your life down. In a way, the picture that Peter gives us here is sort of a lowercase s suffering. It's, it, it's fascinating to think about it that way, but it, it's, the, the church becomes a place which purposefully chooses this lowercase s suffering. Jesus followers absorb the discomfort of having to forgive someone else or the hassle of hospitality, or the sacrifice of serving, and even the brokenness of sin, to say, I, I give up my fight for justice, and I will forgive the way you have wronged me. So we take on and we absorb this lowercase f's, s suffering, and that's important to this community because these first century Christians that Peter is writing to, are also suffering, capital S, suffering. And when you learn together in the community how to bear each other's burdens through lowercase s, suffering, it prepares you and builds you up for the potential of capital S, suffering. Peter says to them, don't be surprised at the fiery ordeal you're going through. That sounds epic and overwhelming a fiery ordeal that they're going through. This community in Asia Minor, in modern-day Turkey, was mistreated. They, They were socially punished. They were publicly abused. Some were murdered, and all because of their faith. Sometimes people suffer because of sin. Sometimes people suffer because of unique circumstances. Sometimes people suffer because of mistakes. Uh, Sometimes people suffer just because they're jerks and they bring it on themselves. This isn't that. This is suffering because these people specifically proclaim Jesus is Lord. And Peter says, don't be surprised by that. But they're experiencing economic implications. They're experiencing political implications. They're experiencing local social communications or implications and implications with their friends and family abandoning them all because they say Jesus is Lord all because of their faith so this isn't exactly like our current circumstances the troubles and the trials that we're experiencing now aren't because we are proclaiming Jesus is Lord. These are troubles and trials that all people are experiencing in some form or another that um, whether or not they're Jesus followers. The whole world is experiencing this. So this is different. And if we're honest, we don't usually suffer capital S suffering in our context. Um, not, Not in the way that our fellow brothers and sisters say in North Korea or Syria or other parts of the world may be suffering. Some of us have made decisions because of following Jesus that have cost us something, and we've experienced that. But very few of us have been arrested because we have proclaimed Jesus is Lord. Very few of us have been attacked for reading the scriptures in public. So it's difficult for us to understand this context. But perhaps it can translate for us in this way. Every time pressure is applied, Christ should be revealed in us. So it it begs the question, um, with any test, if we've been soaking in the love and the presence of Christ and we're squeezed, what comes pouring out? When you're squeezed, what comes pouring out? Have you been 
soaking in the love and the compassion of Christ so that the love and compassion of Christ can come pouring out of you when you're squeezed. And maybe that can prepare us for if we experience someday the capital S suffering that some of these other Christians are facing. Peter says to them, take heart. You get to share in the sufferings of Christ. He even says, rejoice in it. Rejoice. You get to participate in Christ's suffering. And we, that's a word for us too. We get to share in Christ's suffering if someone comes after us because we proclaim Jesus is Lord. That's not usually on the marketing materials for the Christian faith, is it? Come along, rejoice in suffering with us. We like the love and the peace and the joy thing, but we don't ever talk about the suffering thing that comes with it. But it's not surprising. The one who gave his life and was obedient even unto death on a cross says, take up your cross and follow me. If we follow, we will experience suffering like Christ did. But why in the world would anyone sign up for this? Why? I get to suffer like Jesus, that guy that died on the cross? Why would I ever want to proclaim that Jesus is Lord? It's simple. Because we have encountered love and grace and life. Peter says earlier in his letter, in chapter 3, verse 18, he says, For Christ also suffered for once for sins, the righteous for the unrighteous, to bring you to God so that you can know your creator and be in a relationship with this God. We have been changed by the self-giving love of Jesus. We have, we have been brought to God and welcomed in. He's our living hope. Peter said it at the beginning of the letter. Praise be to the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and an inheritance that can never, that can never perish, spoil, or fade. Did you notice in chapter 4, Peter buries a beatitude in here? Be the beatitudes uh, from Jesus' Sermon on the Mount. Blessed are, blessed are the poor in spirit. Blessed are the meek. Peter echoes the last beatitude from Jesus. It's right there in, in verse 14. You are blessed. He says, if you are insulted because of the name of Christ, you are blessed. For the spirit of glory and of God rests on you. His presence and his glory rest on us. He has come near and he stands somehow, mysteriously and beautifully with those who suffer for his name. God is on the side of the suffering. God is on the side of the downtrodden because of their faith. He gives strength to endure. His love is revealed through us. And it is an honor to bear the name of Jesus Christ and share his burdens. So we hope that the end is near. We cry out, come Lord Jesus. Bring the restoration of all things. End all suffering. And while we wait for his perfect timing, we soak in the love of God. We share the love of God together. And we endure any suffering in a way that might reveal Christ in us. We trust in the God who is sovereign over all things, knowing that he is with us. Let's pray. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, to you all hearts are open. We ask that your word would take root and that you would continue speaking to us about your love, 
about the call to be united in your spirit, loving one another, covering over each other's sins. Lord, we ask for your strength in the sufferings that we might endure, and especially in the capital S sufferings that might come. Lord, we pray for those brothers and sisters around the globe that experience the capital S suffering of persecution. Would you bring peace to them? Lord, we cry out, come quickly, sovereign one. In the name of Jesus Christ, risen and reigning Lord over all, we pray these things. Amen.